welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel guys and of course today we are going to be looking back at what was a statement performance at long long last from Barca in a big game winning against Sevilla at the Ramon Sanchez Pijuan and especially we're going to be looking at the system and the tactics that Koeman selected which made all of it very very possible and I'm going to be explaining why this three at the back system perfectly suits our players in their current state. We're going to be talking about it all and some more, so let's get to it. And I want to start first and foremost, guys, by saying, you know what, yes, this was just one game, and yes, of course, from Barca, I always say this, we're looking for consistency, and we never want to get too far ahead of ourselves, I understand that, but of course, yesterday, we were happy, not just the fans, but the players, Ronald Koeman, of course, and indeed the press, we're just finally so happy to see Barca in a big game, not just win, not just play well, but we arrived with a clear plan, and I haven't seen that many times this season. I asked you guys there in my community section, whether you thought it was the best Barca performance we've seen of the season, and quite clearly, you think so. And I completely agree with that. And I've got to, first of all, give credit to Ronald Koeman, because it is quite funny. The other day on the channel, when we were looking through all the memes and all that kind of stuff, we were actually saying, it's crazy how Ronald Koeman hasn't quite got his defence organised as we expected, considering when he was a player at Barca, he was amazing as a centre-back. And he played, of course, in Johan Cruyff's dream team. And it is interesting that yesterday, Yesterday, in that time of need, he went to three at the back, which coincidentally is a similar setup to that used by Johan Cruyff himself. And obviously, a lot of people will say, you know, a few days ago we were all criticising Koeman, a few days ago we were very, very unhappy with the team. And look, the win yesterday hasn't undone all of that. I'm not saying that overnight now Barcelona are suddenly something different, but it's not rocket science. If you pick a poor team, if you select the wrong players at the wrong time, if you do the same thing over and over again, as we saw against PSG, as we saw against Cadiz, of of course we're going to get angry. Of course there is going to be criticism. Ronald Koeman himself, he understands that. But at the same time, we want this guy to do well. We want Koeman and Barca to be a success. So when something goes right, when you actually make a change there, when you do something a bit different and it comes off, we don't have an agenda. So I'm going to come out and say, you know what? Well done. Credit there to Ronald Koeman. You did try something different. And just look, it has paid off. And it is interesting because obviously you think about earlier on in the season, we did see this three at the back system. We've seen us lined up with three centre backs, the wing backs pushing on and we did see it earlier on and I'm not really sure to be honest why Ronald Koeman dropped it because just think about it right now we are a team who right throughout the season we've been lacking in a bit of confidence we've been sort of finding it difficult to put together a serious run we've got a bit of a soft center we all know there that the core of the Barcelona team it's not what it used to be we are prone to individual mistakes so what would you say then we need there a bit more protection we need there a little bit more security in our defensive area and I think that system that we saw yesterday as I'm going to show you now it does give you that extra layer of security and it also gives our quality attacking players and also our fullbacks full license to go and do what they do best. Because let's just compare here the difference in setup, the difference in structure between two at the back in terms of two centre backs and three at the back. And I just want to show you there a few big, big differences and why for us right now, three at the back is definitely giving us more protection. Because a lot of the time, people say, you know, in terms of a Barcelona team, three at the back is pretty pointless because as we know, the wing backs usually go forward anyway. And usually then that situation, we got a high line and Sergio Busquets there will drop in and it'll effectively be anyway, three centre backs. And there's one big difference with that right now. Would you look at that as a back three and say, you know what? Yeah, that's definitely secure because no, it isn't. Whereas you look yesterday at the three of the back that we had and it's a very, very different blend of players. Now you've got Alba. Now you've got Des pushing on. Now, first of all, you still have in midfield the security of three players in there. So you've still got there all of that quality in midfield and that's an extra layer there when you're trying to defend, when you're trying to press. You can have two players go and you can still have Busquets here sitting. You can still use the press that way. But also there, look at those centre-backs. You've got Longley, you've got Mingueza, you've got Piquet. Now, Mingueza has a lot of pace. He also has a lot of aggression in his game. He's not scared there to go and close down an attack at source. But if he makes a mistake, it's not the end of the world. Piquet here can cover him behind. And when Piquet leaves his man, he's also not going to be exposed because Longley can come over as well. Busquets can drop in. For me, there is such a bigger margin of error. One little lapse in concentration. If Longley goes out there, if he gets caught out here, it's not as catastrophic catastrophic as it would be when you have those two centre backs. I think certainly there, when you make a mistake here, when you give the ball away here, it is so, so open. And you've seen teams, of course, cut through Barcelona 
with a three and a three in midfield too, it does help you. And especially right now, we do need that. And another thing that should be mentioned as well, I think we also suit playing three centre-backs right now because right the way through the season, due to injuries, due to suspensions, all of this kind of stuff, we haven't been able to really get a combination in there. You haven't been able to get a rock-solid centre-back duo of Araujo and Mingueza, of Araujo and Pique. It's not been possible to do that because of all the problems that we've had. So I think there, when you can't rely on a rock-solid duo, just play one more. We don't want to be chopping and changing every single week, playing with uncertainty at centre back. You play the three there, they can help each other out, they can pass around the workload, and I think ultimately it's about spreading that risk thinner and thinner across our defence. And I would also look there certainly not just on the ball, not just what we can do defensively, but I would also look at the shape off the ball from Barcelona yesterday, and I would say this, we know that we're not the most mobile team ever, we know that our experienced players in there, they're not exactly going to get about the pitch in rapid fashion, so having more players there, like I say, in that central area, having more licence there to go and press and not be leaving so much space in behind, it helps us a lot. Because how many times yesterday did you see Barca against Sevilla, Barca closing down in twos and threes, not just there going one-on-one, -on -one, trying to face up to your man and then getting played around. We were all the time hunting down the ball in packs, going two-on-one -on -one and winning the ball back quickly and that's so, so important. For Barcelona it's always been really important to win the ball back at source, to win the ball back as quickly as you possibly can. We were organised in our pressing and that in itself that is vital. But it wasn't just about the centre-backs either. It wasn't just there about lining up with three. It was what that did for the rest of the team. And now I want to focus here on these wing-backs. I want to focus on what they gave us in our game. And I was so, so impressed with the way they played. Because as you can see here from our average positioning, it was interesting yesterday to analyse the position of Jordi Alba. Because he was not as advanced as he usually would be. He didn't go forward, especially in that first half, half as much as he usually would. It was a much, much more disciplined performance from him. And I think also, in him staying back there, not quite being as advanced, he also helped support Longley and the two of them on that side, you have to say they were pretty solid. But I would in particular look here at Serginho Dest. For me, one of his best games yesterday in a Barcelona shirt. And I think actually, as a wingback right now, it's the best place for him to start at Barcelona. Because right now, Dest as a player, I think he's still working on the defensive side of his game. He still needs to improve on that area. And he's still ultimately learning how to play in a Barcelona team. And I think putting him in there as as a wing-back, it's a lot less pressure. It's a very different story here. Playing as a wing-back, he's got Mingueza to help him out. We know that Mingueza has played as a right-back too. So those two together, much, much more solid. As opposed to when you're playing four at the back here. And suddenly then, he's being left one-on-one. -on -one. He's got Pique helping him out. He's got Busquets maybe coming across. But ultimately there, he's out on his own. It's a very, very different game. But also going forward, how many times yesterday was Dest given that license there to just roam? To be right up high? To be giving us that with because he knows he's got that protection. He's got Mingueza in there. Pique can come across. Longley can come across. And you're still very, very organised, but still good. Still a threat going forward. And I would say yesterday, thinking there about what our wing-backs did, you think of Papu Gomez from Sevilla, you think of Munir El Haddadi, they brought players off the bench there like Suso, they even went with one more forward, how often did you see them? Because for me, for most of that game there, you had Papu Gomez, you had Munir tracking back, they had to deal with the wing-backs, so much so, they spent most of the game doing defensive work, we hurt them going the other way, and that's also really important. And I think actually, guys, in terms of wing-backs, you think of the full-backs that we have right now, Jordi Alba, I think he's obviously a lot, lot better going going forward than he is defensively. Junior Firpo, he played as a wing-back when we signed in there from Real Betis. You've got Serginho Dest, who, like I say, is more comfortable going forward. And then you've got Sergio Roberto. I would actually say right now, every single fullback that we have at the club, they would play better. They would be much, much more comfortable as a wing-back instead of an out-and-out -out fullback. where, yes, in recent years, we have been caught out in that area. But of course, we simply cannot talk about the changing system. We simply cannot talk there just about the defensive solidity, about the fact that we were more solid and the wing backs worked because there was one player in particular who made all of this possible and still made sure that even despite losing a forward, only playing there with Messi and Dembele, it was the performance, it was the energy, it was the absolute carnage that Ousmane Dembele caused severe. He kept them on their toes every single time he was on the shoulder. He was on the last line of that defence there, looking to get in behind, looking to stretch them, looking there to cause problems and get us up the pitch. And he 
was brilliant. And I love, to be honest, given the fact there that we only played with two forwards, I love that he was able to be nice and central. He was playing yesterday as an out-and-out centre-forward, and he was so, so good in that role. And I think Messi, he really enjoyed that too. Every single time Messi got the ball, he was looking up. Where's Dembele? Can I find him? And Dembele made some really intelligent runs. Messi, of course, is good enough to find him, and it works so, so well. Because how often have we seen Messi drop into this kind of area here? How often have we seen Messi come into that zone, pick up the ball, and then he's looking? And so, so many times this season, there's been no movement. Barcelona have been completely and utterly static. But no, yesterday, he had that movement. He had somebody there willing to go in behind time and time again and be disciplined when he was doing it. It's not an incredibly complex thing to do. It's been there all season, staring us in the face. You've just got to have destructive players. You've got to have quick players there who are capable of getting into that area and making something happen. Yesterday, Dembele, from the left, from the right, down the middle, he was a threat in all areas. And I do have to say, again, the plan was there. And I think far too often this season, we've sort of played our three forwards, Griezmann, Dembele, Messi, and it kind of feels as though you put the players out there and you just think, okay, they're quality players, they're brilliant players, they'll find a way of just making something happen. They'll just improvise when they're out there and they'll get a goal from somewhere out of individual magic. But yesterday, it felt different. We only played with two forwards, but that almost made us more careful on the ball, more precise, more calculated in our attacks. And like I say, the end product, it was destructive, it was clinical, everything we wanted to see from Dembele and the combination with Messi... It was brilliant. But of course, guys, the big question here that I am going to leave you with in today's video, the big question all looks to Wednesday. The game against Sevilla, the second leg, it's in slightly different circumstances. We know that we have to make a comeback. We've got to score goals. We have to be right at it and try and get that comeback underway. But yesterday, of course, that result would have been good enough to at least take the game to extra time. So the question is, ahead of Wednesday, the same opponent, just a few days later, Will Koeman stick with the system? Will he try and improve it? Will he tweak it any? Or will he change back to a traditional four at the back system? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. What would you do against Sevilla? I'm very, very interested to see how you would go about it in what is another big game to come. Thank you indeed for watching, guys. It is brilliant. It is absolutely brilliant to enjoy these moments, to celebrate a big win. But we want more. We want these moments week in, week out. Consistency is the key. It's a big game coming, and I'll be right here to enjoy it with you. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I will see you soon. But until next time, as always, Vishka, El Pasa.